Okay. No, this is great. So what is, okay. I'm gonna show you a picture. Okay, that's fine. In the meantime, walk on, it's Straddle Princess. And we're having a great talk today about fuck boys. <laughs> So okay, okay. I know this. I know this type. Okay. I know this type. Okay. I play games with these types. Okay. Just kidding, I don't. He's a gorgeous human being. Sure. He's been a model in the past. He's been an actor in the past, right? And he, he's on Tinder. He's yeah, he runs his game. Time. Yeah, he, he runs, runs his game. game. And when he was living in Taiwan, I, I, I met him. Okay. Oh, I mean, no, I haven't met him, but I like challenge. Time overlaps. Well, you, oh, really? Let me see if I see him. <laughs> Cause I, cause I, I love fucking with guys like this. Cause I'm like, oh honey, you have met your match, and you think you can run game on me. And I'm like, oh, no, definitely not. I, I don't follow anyone. I, I would be like, oh, you have run your game. Uh, no. Okay, but pretty boy. So, what's your definition of a fuck boy? A guy who can. A guy who can get dates with. Majority of women. Yeah, like ninety percent. But still does not choose. Right? Yeah. Because in the general. Fund, too many options. Too many options, and they're always looking for the next best thing. Yes, it's that dopamine rush. They think like any slight little thing, like yeah, oh my god, I, I don't like. Yes. Oh, you mean the guy wants to be pursued, or the girl? Oh, he wants to hunt. It's kind of both. Yeah, he likes to pursue. Yeah. And as soon as What's the innate male? It, like oh, he's done. Too strong. He's done. Yeah. Why is that? Because did you did you, did you ask him? No, I've, oh. I've had this conversation. And he doesn't know why. Reason. What really? What did he say? Was his? What did he say though? Like my, okay, so that's one fuck boy. Fuck boy number two. Is for, for the reason why he pulls back. Yeah, I've asked him. Okay, like, and then what did he like, say? There was a girl. Like, we were mutual friends. Sure. I remember, right? Oh, and she was talking to me about him. Okay. And like, oh, what do you know about him? I, Gossip, the tea. She, okay, so this girl was dating a stand-up okay. in Taipei. Okay. Broke up. Okay. And then... It's not the owner of the stand-up. No. Okay. Yeah. Really? Yeah. How long have you been Sam? Or you know, the Chinese one or the English one? The English one. Oh, really? The American one. Sam? No, Jonah. Jonah's not the owner. I thought he was the, he says he's the owner. He's one of the partners. Okay. I didn't know, I didn't know, there, I didn't know there was a class yeah, difference. There's like... Well, it's a Taiwanese business. All yeah. Taiwanese businesses have like at least three partners. And oh, uh, in, aside from owners, like owners and then partners. To me, it doesn't. Partners, it's a, owners, and it's a row. Yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah, so a row. Okay, they're relevant. Anyway, so fuck boy number two. What did he say? He said that when this girl showed interest. Showed interest, and like she, I would say she fell hard for him. She really liked it. Of course. As, he, as most women do when the guys turn on the charm. Yeah. He, he was like, oh, she just like, she was just too attached, too attached to him. <laughs> like, just this lame ass excuse. In fairness, though, I can, I can understand that it, when someone gets too attached, it's just like, oh my god, it's too much. I need space. I need space. I can't handle someone. Like, I want the clingy, but I also want a safe attachment, not like, too, it, you know. It's, there's an ebb and flow, there's a balance. If it's too much, if they're doing 90, then I don't need to do anything. I don't need to, you know, if they're coming at me on 100, I don't need to if you'll sit back and do absolutely nothing. However, so, okay, so continuing this conversation, yeah. because he has a co-worker. Okay. Okay. Um, he said that he likes it when girls aren't interested, which means he likes the chicks. Of course, not every guy does. Every guy wants it. Well, some guys don't. No, some guys actually don't. When they when they realize that they need to chase, they kind of get the clear signal that she's not interested, right? Even though she is, he's just like maybe is just dumb or not dumb, just like. Has so a big skull. Not just like he doesn't get it in his clue that he's got to work and she wants to be courted. There's a difference. There's a difference. Oh, there's a difference. Not done though. That's a poor choice. Yeah, I, I think we're getting we're getting crossed on chasing. Oh, okay. Then right. please there's define that. Chasing. Okay. Chasing. So of course there is. There's three different ways. In my opinion, chasing, my opinion, so chasing. is texting a girl four times. 
times and she never realized. Um, or like, oh, I'm a really bad texter. Yeah, yeah, That's yeah. bullshit. She's not interested. Or she, there's someone else that she's after. Yeah. Okay. We have our phones in our hands. Of course. We're, yeah. <laughs> Anyone who says I'm a bad texter is bullshit. Yeah. No, I understand, like, you might have, like, uh, meditation hours or, like, you know. In my defense, though. No, but in, in people's defense who are bad texters, because I, I say I'm a bad texter. Because most so of yes, the, I am. I could, I know. That's why I'm mentioning it. Because I'm saying like in in someone's defense, would say that. Because I say that it's because sometimes I don't want to be on my phone. I want my alone time, and I don't want to be. I don't want my brain like distracted when I just want to focus. Because I want to be completely mindful with my day. That's why I'm a bad texter. That means it's like, oh my god, like it doesn't mean that I'm ignoring you. It's just like I did check my phone. But yeah, like, like our relationship is not at the place where you, where I feel like you owe me anything. Wait, what? Like you, I don't feel. Oh like right. You owe me so that's the thing when people are like, that's when they have the insecure attachments or they have this chasing game. It's because when someone goes on scene and they get super anxious because yeah, yeah. they feel like they're owed an immediate response within five minutes or whatever. Once you're on scene, though, like you can't just reply. Right, exactly. You can. You can. The mature thing to do, which some men don't, most men don't, and some women don't either, is say, "Hey, I saw your message, but I need some time to respond because, like, I'm, I don't want to deal with this." Like, that's fine. And, but they'll write that at least, like, "Yeah, let me give me some time to respond." And so that's the mature way. That's what I do. Otherwise, um, other times it can be deliberate. You know. So the chasing. So guys like the chase. They want to chase. They always do. Because it turns them on where they, they send a message to a girl and she just leaves it on scene and it's like on it's like on red. Guys get frustrated by that. Eventually. It's immature. It should be affected by that. Of course. But it's it's like a it's not it's not just leaving messages on scene because that's like a hit game. And I'm not yeah, just that's, saying like I don't people don't want to so every guy operates like this, 100% every guy. Oh really? Yeah. I think every guy operates on... Oh interesting, interesting. So the, I thought... Like, then because my one friend just had... The fuck boy? Um, so, but fuck boys like the chase because they like the drama. They like the the feelings that it evokes because it's yeah, it's a like sense of yeah. the, the anxiety a little bit, like the ooh, she's making me feel something. It's not safe. It's not secure. Yeah, yeah I mean, honestly, like the kind of guy. It's not a real relationship. Yeah, it's not. It's not the guy. Because the thing is, eventually, those feelings. What it is, because I study this all the time, I'm not kidding, like I, I, I nerd out on neuroscience, I nerd out on the psychology of relationships, and this is what I want my YouTube channel to talk about, like, most of the time, when they don't see my ass in a bikini. But the thing is, is like, people like come to see my ass in a bikini, but they stay for the talk, because they're like, oh, you're actually wholesome, and you actually like, can talk about things. And, and so like, that's what keeps me going. And so when I talk about the psychology of relationships, the stress, that's, that's so what you're talking about is the stress, the initial stress that someone feels, the um, the actual cortisol levels shoot up. Really? When someone has those messages like that go on that go on red on red and not yeah. answered. So the stress goes up. I mean, yeah, and so the, you're dealing rejected. with these feelings. But so they like the stress because they think that's chemistry and they think, oh my god, I'm excited, this is something new and refreshing. Fuck boys are not any 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 anything. It's just the action. Initial meeting, you'll have this stress, right? And they'll think it's chemistry. Oh my god, the magic, the the chemistry, like ooh, I can fantasize about this person, I can see myself with them. But anyways, this eventually those stresses fade. Because then you get out of the honeymoon phase, that stress response, the initial cortisol response, do they like me, what does this mean, into the more solid, this is where 
the actual tests of the relationship, the bond is being tested. Can these people actually be in each other's company in silence? Does that stress them out? Can these people actually live and build together and do life together? So eventually, once those people, like, we can just call it what it is, once those fuckboys, they get past that stage, they don't want to move past. So they continuously get into that cycle just because they want to be in that cycle. That's the one trick wonders. Because they don't want to be doing life together with someone. Or they want the girlfriend experience without the commitment and that's what the situation should be. But they, but they, but they don't, they want that, but they can't be the partner. They, like, they cannot, they aren't, they can't be the boyfriend. They aren't qualified to be a partner. So they end up in situationships. And this is why, this is why when you showed me the, um, the picture of that friend, I was like, oh man, he has to his match. If he meets me, I will call him out on his shit. <laughs> and he'll <laughs> know. If he's, but he moved back to the States, right? Already. Vancouver. So it's, it's just funny to me because I see it with so much clarity. These guys running the game. But so many don't. So many don't run game or so many? So many don't see it. Oh, so many women don't see yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Of course. Because they want to play the game too. Of course. They're young. I mean, they're they're stupid. The host stage. They're what? The host stage? I don't think it's the host stage. I think they're just naive and they just fall hard, fall fast because a oh my god, the hot bod or like oh my god, you're you're saying all the right things. You're, but the thing is, is that the guys, yeah, the guys run the game. Yes, they know exactly what they're doing. And the girls eat it up, and I'm like watching this as an outsider. I'm like laughing on the inside because I'm like, this won't, this doesn't work on me. So have you, have you done Tinder in the I did when the app first came out, and I don't, it's not really for me, so I'm like, I'm not on apps. Yeah. Are you on apps? Also yeah, I just feel like the apps, I mean, it's just, it's fake, it's just like, I am at the point in my life where like, energy is so important and I like protect my energy, so for me to like seep, for me to like send energy and like give my energy to someone for a meal or whatever and, and the connection is fake, it's just a waste of my time. And so, it is a lot of work. It takes a lot of time, and, but even guys complain it takes a lot of time to close and to do these things. It is, but it takes a lot of time to do it. But it's almost. But that's. But the thing is, is that like they they find that it's it can also be an addiction. People can be addicted to this cycle because they want the sex, they want to try different holes, whatever you know. So it's. It is what it is. Um, yeah. Do you want to do like an appetizer? I only got through the appetizer first. I'm very hungry. Are you hungry? I haven't eaten since. I only ate one meal today. You're what? No, I mean, I'm a flexitarian. Uh, flexitarian. Okay. Uh, can I get uh, two pork tamales? Yeah, sure. Okay, thank you. Any drink? We'll just start with that. Okay. It just means you're an omnivore. <laughs> it means you're when, a self-righteous omnivore. It means when I see something that I like, I will eat it. But for the most part, I try to be good. But I love Mexican food so much that um, I I don't know. I, it's good. It's good. I like it. I like the food. Are you getting the two pork tamales for yourself, or are we having one each? Let's do. Let's do one. Let's do that. Let's share one each because I don't think I've had a pork tamale here before. What's good here? Uh, you want to try the Bahastai Tape? The what? The Bahastai fish. Where is that? Taco. In where, the taco. Where is that? Bahastai fish taco. Yeah, like a fried fish. That's fried? Yeah. Uh, so can I do something not fried? Is there uh, we have all you want to try the fried fish. For tacos? Yes. Well, do you feel like tacos or do you feel like a Mexican plate? Or ceviche? You're gonna get enchiladas. The enchiladas? Um. The steak. The steak. Oh, the chicken enchilada. Okay, sure. Oh man.
can we do can we share like oh that's perfect i love this piece of yes okay so then let's do where did you even see the enchiladas oh oh i see so we got them wait what did you get the mole chicken enchilada oh that looks good okay so we'll do that and then what else i don't want a quesadilla you want to what about like a, for the egg like a ensalada? Yeah, do you want to do either the or, 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 Wait, which what's let's do this one. Oh, the, the cocktail will be like a shrimp, but ceviche is fish. Oh, then let's do ceviche. Okay. And then do you still want the ensalada? Or, like this, ensalada. It, it looks like this. It's kind of like... Oh, we did. Okay, let's start with that then. Let's start with that. Any drink? Um, let's tell margarita. Okay. That sounds so good. Oh, man. I would also love a mezcal margarita. I love mezcal. Okay, sure. I'm telling you, I love mezcal. Okay, so it's gonna be the... Yeah, so it's gonna be the pork tamales for two, and mole chicken and gelada once, and chorinche once, and mezcal margarita for two. Okay. Okay, sure. I'm so hungry. Okay, thank you. I'm gonna keep the menu just in case. Okay. I've been here before. I, I had it today. I had chicken. I had fish. Um, but I don't know. I've, I have. I can. This girl can eat. And I don't know. I love food. Yeah. No. Honestly, like there are girls who are like the kind of girls who just like don't eat on dates and then maybe they like to are like a little afraid to like show their like how they eat but I and doesn't eat oh too much the main lobster and oh that's too much or like she just gets the most expensive thing on the menu just because it's the most expensive I mean, I don't judge people, but like, you know why she's doing that. Yeah. She's just seeing how you'll react when you do that. Yeah, she's seeing if, one, if you've got the money to do it, you can, or if you're just flexing on the one date and you don't actually have the money to do it, because she's probably setting, trying to set the standard. This is how I want to be treated every time. Mm -hmm. But the thing is, if she's not going to enjoy it, so it's just a mind game. It could be a mind game, but she also probably could love the lobster and T-bone steak. I love that. Like, I've been taken to buffets, and I love the lobster and the T-bone steak. Like, have you been to a Vegas buffet? Oh my gosh, they have the best, like, lobster and steak and king crab legs. It's amazing. Yeah. But I don't judge, like to each their own. Like I know that there are guys who love to dope on girls like that and say, please, if that's what you want, have it. Because you deserve to be clean and so you got to be treated like one. First date though? Why not? There's nothing wrong with that, absolutely. I've had that happen with me because they wanted me. They actually I actually I would I would actually I actually said to a guy like um, you know, like I, I feel like I'm always like the boss and I'm always like in control. Why don't you order for me? And he picked the best things, he picked the most expensive things for me. And it was just like, oh, that's awesome. <laughs> so, what you do, so, that was the next question, what you do that so you have just let, let go of control and take. Oh, yeah. It's, so it's like, I think it's incredibly like romantic. And but the thing is, it's it's like a dominant thing when like, oh like if a if a guy can truly allow a woman to fully soften in her like divine feminine and really take control, that's incredibly sexy and it's dominant and it's like the power and control, but in the most healthy way. And it's not sexual; it's just dinner. Yeah. But that's how you know what things that sets the precedent for things. Absolutely. Because I I mean I see like some guys you know multi millionaires. And they 
are, and it's not even about the money. Sometimes it's just like the BDE. They'll be like, they'll say, hey, and but this is hypothetical because I haven't had them go this far, but I know guys who've done this. Andrew Tate, for example, he'll say stuff like, yeah. I, I picked the dress for you. I want you to wear this, wear these heels. I bought this outfit. Dinner's at eight. We're going to this place. I'm going to do all the ordering. To me, sometimes that's incredibly, not sometimes, that's incredibly sexy because then it's like, wow, I can actually soften. Everything is just taken care of. And like, that's really nice to be shown like how he wants to take care of me. And that's like, Kind of a relief because then I don't have to feel like I need to be on edge to be in control of my own destiny. It's kind of nice to soften. Yeah, because other guys can't do it if they don't know what they want, they don't know where they're going in life. They or they're just simping out and just like just whatever. No, not simping. No, not whatever. Not at all. It's just almost as if it's like they just don't have the cojones. <laughs> okay. So you consider yourself a feminist. Uh, I don't even use that term. I don't even know what that means. Like, I definitely think that like I'm all about female empowerment, and I believe that women should get paid as much as men, if not more. But men and women have different skills, so we, I do believe that women are being treated unfairly in the marketplace. That's for sure. But that's like world. Yeah, but that's like world. But that's like worldwide. Like. Yeah. There's a huge gender and pay gap between men and women. Is it porn industry? And then there's another one. There's one other pay gap where women get paid more than men. And I know it doesn't balance it out. But, but the thing is, is like there's so many. So like women in the corporate world, there's so few and far in between. But women in the corporate world to get paid more than men, like they're almost seen as being too strong, like too masculine. And then some women, some men, I mean, don't want that. Some men don't want to be the house wife. Some men don't want to be, but some men do. Some men do, like my ex's uh, uncle is the housewife and the, and the wife is like the corporate, like COO of a really big company in the US. But they like, he, they, that dynamic works for them because she wants to be the breadwinner and he wants to take care of the kids. So it totally works. I don't want to take care of the kids either. I don't want kids. <laughs> There's more women than you know who don't want kids, but you are Taiwanese. Yeah, because so many Taiwanese people are programmed and conditioned to get married, have a baby, have a man be the provider. But yeah, so that's why I always wonder. But that's why I always wonder, like, are like, do the men come here wanting to seek the Taiwanese women because of A, the exoticness, because they don't really have Asian women in their home country, or B, I do not. You're in Pennsylvania, right? Yeah, it's like I predominantly here. white. Huh? Oh yeah, most men obviously say they don't come here because they're looking for a girlfriend, but they just, they come here for like work opportunities, the culture. What did you come here then? Retirement. To retire. So you're about to retire. Yeah. And with your, so then why is, why is she your ex? <laughs> because, I'm not going to stream it. Oh. Uh, yeah, uh, later, 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 I'm not going to tell you that story. But, but okay, but yeah. Yeah, so then, when, how old are you? 35? Let's go with that, yeah. No, 40? Well, if you're saying let's go with that, it means older. What's your over? What is it? Okay, so like, I mean, it's not 40 ish. Uh, it doesn't even matter. So, the thing is, is like I ask everyone that question because it's, I, it's honestly on people's minds. Yeah. If it's on my mind, I'm like, so why are you here? You want to be a Chinese girlfriend? Like, I'm not afraid to like ask that question because it's the here. elephant in the room. I'll, just, I'll say, I came here as a married man. My wife and I lived here together. Things changed. Yeah, now of course. Divorced. Yeah. Is she still in Taiwan? Yeah, this is it hard? Yeah, oh. yeah, so it's kind of like we were trying to decide. Well, she decided to stay as well as I did. Yeah, of course. It was a good place to, to live in this world. Yeah. But yeah, no, that's all I have to say. So, honestly, God told the truth, I don't want to be a Taiwanese. Why? Because that's. 
is 141, right? And that means I'm looking between 31 and 41, right? Okay. A, Not younger. Huh? Not younger. I mean, I totally would, but, oh. you know, I don't have a face for dating. Most men think that, huh? Like, most Okay, sorry, sorry, sorry. Rewrite, no, rewrite. Re no, no, hold. I do not have a mass for A mask? Mask? In line. Oh, the mass. I'm a thick guy. Oh, I thought, okay, so I, this is something that I wonder, like, and I'm sure most men are cognizant of it, where when they're in their 30s, they're in their prime, or they're in their 20s, they're like, I'm in my prime, I want to sell my oats, I just want to get no, as I much feel, as I, I can. I feel better in my 40s than I did in my 20s. Most people do feel better as they age with the wisdom and whatnot, but I do wonder sometimes, like, because there are these probably fuck boys who think, like, I'm in, I'm in the prime of my life, I look so good, I might as well get it in before I start to yeah. not look as good. If, if you ask them the question, do you have an Asian fetish, they would say no. What's Asian fetish? Asian, oh, Asian fetish. They yeah. would say no, but They'd I think they, no, but but deep down, I think yeah, they yeah, do. Because otherwise, why would they want to seek exactly. out this culture? Exactly. And why course, it's the Asian elephant in the room. Why yeah, it's the elephant in the room. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so... I mean, granted, the numbers are highly fair. Well, yeah, there's just more yeah. Asian so, people here yeah. than in their home country. Yeah. But then they also defend themselves saying, no, I want to come here for work opportunities and I don't want to be lonely. There just happens to be more people here and they just happen to be Asian. I think, I think it's a, I want to say it's the primary motive. Maybe, maybe when they're making the decision to come to Taiwan. Yeah. They may be heavily motivated. Because I thought about this myself. If I moved to France or Italy, you know, or Sweden or something, yeah. people there are going to be blonde hair, blue eyes. Or, you know, so like, uh, of course, if, if if I'm thinking like, that's probably one reason I would move there, like try the dating market, like, of course I would think in the other realm, men coming to Asian countries would, you know, it's, it's just the elephant in the room. You don't need to like, beat around the bush. It's just kind of. Well, it's considered a yeah, but that's why I get in trouble, because, and that's why I wonder if I'm mean sometimes because I don't have a filter I mean, and I just say what's on my mind. What? <laughs> because okay, so I, what but I, I say I'm, what people are thinking, but not, I, I don't have balls to say that. Guys that come to Taiwan, right? So <laughs> they, yes, they may, the Asian fetish may come into play when they're making the decision to come to Taiwan, right? Yeah. However, some have been here for years, right? Yeah. They've studied the language. They speak Chinese, they have become part of the culture, they like it here, it's safe, yeah. it's a good place to be. Of course, all great and, reasons to live in any country. they end up staying here for an extended period of time. Yeah. If they come here for one year, and they're just like, just passing through, yeah. probably Asian fetish comes into play, because honestly, it's like, even with my fellow friends, it's, it's not easy, even though they're gorgeous. Yeah. It's not easy dating in Taiwan because Taiwanese girls want to get married. Yeah, so it's really hard. Yeah, and their Taiwan is more traditional. Yeah, but then these girls, but wouldn't these girls still like fall? Ooh, ooh, this looks so good. Ooh, can we have another plate? Oh wait, we have plates. There we go. Oh, I'll still want. Uh, there's a menu here. It's fine. I don't. Just in case. I like to like, ooh, this looks so good. Oh, I'm gonna go for a hot stuff first. Uh, oh, I love mole. Oh my god, my mouth is like salivating. Why? Why is that hard to believe? You didn't remember. Well, I didn't think the name of this. Yeah, that's hard. Okay. In your defense. Oh my goodness. What's your uh, current favorite TV show? Oh. Uh, I, off the top of my head, I just said Westworld, but I already watched it all. Okay. Oh yeah, Foundation. I love sci-fi. Mm -hmm. Have you watched Lincoln? Is that on Netflix? Um, I don't know. Oh, car. Oh, thank you, thank you. Thank you. So good. Cheers. Arriba, abajo, al centro. Arriba, no, abajo, al centro. Oh, 
A whistle? You know, like TJ, they, they pour the like, rock beer tequila down your throat and then they blow the whistle and shake your head. I've never been to, to, to TJ when... I've, I've been to TJ like a long time ago, but I've never been to TJ like to party. It's so good. I love mezcal. I like mezcal a lot. I like mezcal more than tequila. So the agave. Tequila. I told you tequila is like my favorite drink, right? Or like mezcal, yeah. Oh my god, I gotta show this food. We're gonna be done. Oh, because I'm gonna eat now. <laughs> Sometimes I like record mukbangs. Mm -hmm. Am I still? Is it still good? Yeah. I think it's just. Oh, that was fast. Okay. Oh yeah, I eat a lot. How do we eat this? It's just like, okay, I'll split it. Cause it, it's, cause there was supposed to be two. So did they just put two in one? Yeah. It looks like it, they wrap them up super tight. Um, is this the is this one tamale or two? Uh, two. Oh. I'll I'll serve it to you. Mm -hmm. That's okay. I love. problem that I have with like restaurants like this is if they serve it all at once, it's just like, then the food's gonna get cold. Not, oh, in Taiwan, not in like, not if you go to like an actual restaurant that knows what they're doing. They actually, and I worked in restaurants before, they know when to fire. We don't just fire all at once. So now I feel like I'm racing against the clock because otherwise this mole is not gonna taste good. It's kind of annoying. But it's not though, he's Mexican. He should know. <laughs> I'm being like really critical of him. Mm. Um, so good. Worst job ever. My worst job? Yeah. Obviously working at a bank. I was so miserable. Okay. Working on why is that just numbers? No, because of the culture. Like I didn't like it's weird when I interned there, like I loved it. I got great got along great with my boss. But then I moved first teams. The culture was so different. I hated it. It was too bro for me. Yeah. And I didn't drink I didn't drink like a Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, and I didn't drink scotch, so it's just really hard to like be one with the guys. And then I didn't feel comfortable like getting drunk with them because I'm like, I work with you. It's kind of weird. I don't want to show you this side of me. Yeah, but I had a lot of fun in New York, <laughs> like so much fun. I I fell once. I don't have a scar, but I remember showing up to work. <laughs> making up a, a story about how I fell, which I did, but I didn't, make, I didn't make up a story. I just didn't tell the full truth, which was that I got into a tuss, tussle with a bouncer. <laughs> it's surprising, right? Because I'm like five foot two. I feel like 90 pounds, so I've never Yeah. But, I don't know. That's what tequila would do to you. No, that was vodka. <laughs> 
I was bought that time. But yeah, it's kind of funny because I'm like innocent looking. So, uh, my friend was like, I have to pull my hair back. Uh, five. So the airplane lands, what's the first place you're going? LA. Or New York. That's where the airplane's taking you, like, first restaurant you go to. Oh, restaurant? Oh, obviously, the, the, the Mexican restaurant that I like. Oh, really? Yeah. I love that place. It's Taco, it's Toca Madera. It's in West Hollywood. No, for me it's Taco Bell. Um, I don't like Taco Bell. I really do like Taco Bell, but some people always say don't eat there because it's not like real meat. But I love the flavor; it's so good, and I actually love the cinnamon twists. Oh, I used to eat it every week in high school. I actually wish they had one here because usually. But I wish they had one here because they have KFC, they have McDonald's. They used to. Yeah, there was one that took one, maybe like Love 25 years ago, and it just didn't survive because it was too spicy. But Taiwanese food can be really spicy though. Yeah, but people in Taiwanese eat spicy meats. Like sweet meats. Oh, I love spicy meats. That's why I was not a film. Anyway, so I went to Thailand. And they have it there? Yeah, so I was stuck in my hotel. For, for two years. And I was going through their food panda or their breeds, and they had uh, talk about holy shit. I'm so happy. What'd you get? Grande and also, Rap I Supreme. My Trap Supreme. And I never tried it actually. Is it good? The uh, I just got a regular burrito and the right. soft tacos. Because I always actually get the crispy taco and the cinnamon twist. It's my been my order. I've never tried the Crunch Wrap Supreme because back when I was eating it. That didn't exist. <laughs> and when I like like something, I didn't feel the need to change it. Mm, I would love to try the Dorito Supreme because I love Doritos. It's just, like, it's just Doritos. Yeah. But I love Doritos. I like love chips so bad. Um, going back home, yeah, I went to the Taco Dino. There's one Taco Dino. But it's not just the restaurants. I love the taco, like dollar tacos, uh, late night taco trucks. Yeah, yeah. yeah I'm a Mexican food snob. Oh yeah. Well, I mean, yes and no. Like I've been to like the Korean Kogi taco like truck. It's just so expensive. So I kind of want it to be cheap. So I like when I associate like trucks and food stalls, and I want it to be cheap. And so if they're charging me. Twelve dollars. I'm like, oh, I might as well just sit down in a restaurant, not need to stand up and eat. You know? Yeah, but that's LA for you, especially when it's Kobe beef. Yeah. It's a Kobe beef truck. So how long were you in New York? Seven years. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Where did you actually live? Um, in Dumbo. Oh, really? Yeah. Down under the bridge. Yep, down under the bridge, Manhattan. Overpass. Down under Manhattan Bridge Overpass. Mm -hmm. Yep. But then I, and then in the last year I wanted to live in Manhattan, so I lived in the Lower East Side. Just like YOLO and then I'll like put up with the expensive rent just because like this way all my money on rent, yeah. Just to experience Manhattan. Yeah. You wanted your sex in the city. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it was worth it. I don't live I don't I try not to live life with like regrets because it's just like money comes and goes, you know, you'll like get it back and just I think it's just really important to like live life to the fullest. That's why we talk about ego deaths. And yes. So you've been to Burning Man? Yeah. Uh, oh my God. Yeah. yeah. There's an eyelash in my in my boot. Oh. Yeah. 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 Should 
I tell them? Would I in Mexico? If it was, yeah. let's just hope my immune system. Bigger than EDC. Mm -hmm. Or it's like EDC for the East Coast. Okay. I've been to like all of them. Okay. Beyond Wonderland. I've been to all of them. Okay. Yeah. And are you like a full time labor? Not a full labor. Like raver, or all that type of thing. Well, I was, but I never dressed in those outfits, those furry boots. But definitely blur girl. Sure. I saw you at but I don't. I, but, That's the only one we met. That was a straight up raver yeah, but, festival outfit. Of course, I know, I know. But like, I don't want. I'm gonna. I have my own style. I don't just buy into like what everyone else is wearing. Okay. So I don't wear the furry boots and stuff like that kind of raver. I just have my own. I have my own style. Okay. It's funny because my friend would say like regularly. I just like have regularly. I just wear all black. Mm -hmm. you know, like, but. So like I don't, so I don't do have style like on a day to day basis. But my festival game is on point. Okay. Like my festival outfits. That's when that's when like my real personality comes out. That's what they say on festival here. Like it's the, the inside coming out, right? Yeah, that's just my real personality okay. coming out. So definitely, but. So are you a plural girl? Yeah. But I don't even know what that means. But I definitely, well, I know what plural means, but I don't know what plural girl, I know, but I don't know what the plural girl means. I know what plural means. So, so yes, of course I identify with that. I say that, I say that all the time. It's not a thing. Yeah, that's why, that's why when I noticed, like when I was at, when I was at Wulu, I was like, I feel like I'm the only girl standing out. Like everyone else is just like, they're mid, they're bland. I just see them, it's just like they're part of the sand. That's how I saw it. It's like, I mean, aside from the fact that everyone's like kind of wearing the same stuff, they're all like neutral tones, just like regular dresses. Like no one's actually like, they just like blend in. And then it's not that I wanted to stand out, but I was just like, why do I feel like such an outsider? Like, I feel like I don't belong here, which is one of the reasons why I want to leave Taiwan. Because I'm just like, people don't understand that life, the floor life. In general, I feel like Taiwan is highly influenced by European ravers, not so much American ravers. What's European ravers like? So what does that mean in terms of? We're all black, we're black sunglasses, but Maybe that's why I wear all black on my day to day. <laughs> so I embody both of those. She lived in Elon the whole time and I'm back. Yeah. You never lived in Taipei before? No. When you were younger, did you ever come here with your parents? Yeah. Oh, I love that. And 
was that we had lied down the street. Just uh, five, just literally, that she's only open on like. Does she only make tamales? Or does she make some like tamales? Only tamales, but she had the sauce and like little plastic bags. Oh, uh, yeah. Just, and she fried it in the maple leaves, mm. which in my opinion is much better than corn. Oh, yeah. But I've been saying to that, I wish I'd eat a kumar legend with a kebab. Interesting. Usually when I eat Mexican, I usually eat like a. I don't know, it, it, it really depends. I feel like I've tried everything on the menu. Not this menu, but like in general. So that's when you're describing that, I immediately thought of Ethiopian food because yeah. usually like tacos are prepared for you, not you make it yourself. Like, when you, okay, when you go to like Latinos houses, they eat their hands. They eat the tortilla. Yeah, yeah. They don't eat with forks. Honestly, my friend cooked the tortilla directly on the stove. No, 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 uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, no oh, skillet, uh -huh. just yeah, on the yeah. fire. Uh -huh. And then I'm like, wait, you're not afraid of no. it being dirty? And they're like, no, this is how my grandma does it. Yeah, and they taught me how to do it. And that's how my abuela does it. I'm like, yeah. whoa. You throw it on, it pops up a little bit, flip it, pop it, pop it. Yeah. Yeah. That's my best friend. Yeah. Would you believe me if I said I was still hungry? Flavors are so good. I'm still yeah. I, I'm thinking, oh, not yet. I'm thinking about round two. That's yeah. Cool. smuggle in the tortillas from Mexico because they can't they can't um, bring it here 
because they don't sell it here. And so, can you let me choose? Yep. I think it was a flour tortilla, but like it was something special. I don't know, he made it for me because I really wanted to try it, so he brought me home and I tried the tortilla. It was so delicious. Food is love, honestly. It was like, oh my gosh, it was, um, thank you. It was um, something, he said there was some ingredient that is just like, you can't make it in the States, so they have to go to Mexico to get it. No. <laughs> It might have just been some kind of lard that they didn't know is actually in the States, but they think it's illegal or something, and, or molasses, or you know, it's just like the difference between a Mexican Coke and a Coca-Cola. Mexican Cokes can't be here because of the sugar content, or not here, in the States. It's illegal, Mexican Coke. Yep, because of what they agree. No, 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 there's some ingredient, it's not cocaine, but there's some ingredient that is illegal in the United States. But they can't like it's just too high or sure. Like, I don't know. It's, it's, I don't know per se, but I know that it's like yeah. maybe I'm wrong. I could be wrong. It might not be illegal. It might just be too expensive to import into the states. But there is a difference between Mexican Coca Cola and Coca Cola. I know there's a difference. I know there's a taste difference. But I always assume that yeah. with Coke. I hope it didn't bother you that I licked the knife. I'm so, I'm so inappropriate. Wait, what's the difference? Oh, really? No. Like the big family style wedding. No. The big like lazy Susans. What's a lazy Susan? Are you talking about a person? No. What's a lazy Susan? Uh, okay, you're at a big round table. Oh, that's the, the thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. The goes in the middle. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and so like everyone has, we're like a, what's this thing called? Chow, not chow. You're a chow. You're a chow. And Taiwan. What's that? You've been to like a chow? It's food a chow. The, the, the like, if you want, okay, if you want to eat late in Taiwan, you've got like two options. You've got the the, the, the dan, like the breakfast places, like the the dan bing, the oh yeah, and yeah, the yeah. And yeah, the, yeah. right, the shu yeah, and the yeah. dou chan, yeah. or you go to re chow, which is it's like the the slow fryer, fast food oh, place. Yeah. It's like okay, I know what you're it's talking like about. Plate, it's right? just like Boil some vegetables. Right? Well, some of us like they also do like a sweet and sour pork that is pretty close to like what you get in like Panda okay. Express. Okay. Um, so I never go. I have to go with the Taiwanese person in those places because yeah, I don't read the menu. The menu's never in English. Yeah, I don't know it. And I have no idea what I'm ordering because otherwise I'll just get like 35 dishes of sticky tofu. Yeah. Um, anyway, so Red Chow. Like, Lazy Susan. Right? Okay. You, you, you share the chopsticks, right? So the plate goes by and you grab something. If you like your chopsticks and go in. Oh, okay. So you, I you're going to touch that. food that someone else is going to be touching with. Usually you have. Usually you don't really share chopsticks, though. You don't, but like. Okay, so, so I can see how it's possible. If I wanted something else. Right? Yeah. And I lick my spoon. And yeah, I yeah. Not even disgusting. It's the same as yeah. It's the same as licking chopsticks because it's shared. It's a shared. It's a communal bowl. Yeah, that's disgusting. Yeah. Taroko. Yeah. The worst thing. Yeah. So have you done all the touristy stuff? Right? Uh, it's called Thai Thai Beach area. South. I've never been to Taito. I have, yeah. I got my patty there. I haven't been to Orchid Island though. And there's so many places in Taiwan I haven't been. Matsu? What is that? Have you to all the outlying islands? Matsu is the one to the north. I've only been to Great Island. 
also is a smaller archipelago in the far north, also close to China, but it's famous for the blue tears. What's that? The bioluminescence. Ooh, no way. Yeah, but it's only in like March and April, so it's all. Oh, I missed it. Yeah. Oh, I didn't even know that was here. Yeah. There was so much bioluminescence during COVID. Oh, really? But not in these oceans, back in the States. In LA, actually. It was so cool. Really? Just because no one was no one was out, so the ocean finally got clean. Uh, <laughs> yeah, um, oh, that's pretty so good. Jingmen, you been to Jingmen? That's Kinmen, right? Yeah. No, uh, is it nice to be in? Uh huh. Hi. I've had so many plans to go to, to small islands during the summer holiday, but I always get thwarted by typhoon. Oh, right, typhoon season. Right yeah. Now. And I don't really want to go to those places in the winter. It's just too cold? Too cold, and the weather is like the boats are just too choppy. Because I, I want to put my motorcycle on the ferry. Oh, right. Oh, yeah, you had a really nice tent. Like a good camp. Uh, yeah, it's nice, except it's freaking hot in the summertime. Did you offer Rosa, like, to stay in your camp? Because she said that, that she said that she could, that was, like, that you said she could stay with you if she needed. Yeah, well, I mean, she could have, but I never offered it. Oh. Because you guys got there on the day I left. Yeah. So that would have been impossible. She like said, oh, that's my bike in here. I'm like, yeah, that's fine. But yeah, yeah, that's, yeah, that's what she said. <laughs> oh. Yeah, it'll be a dirt spot as soon as I pack on my ship. And that's between you and <laughs> the bugs. Yeah. Again, I'm a bad text. I didn't see the text until after he had already left. So I was like, oh, you know, missed it. But um, he has a girlfriend now. He does? Mm -hmm. Who's his girlfriend? I don't know. Oh, I think I met her. Trauma dumps to you like that. It's fine. 
Christianity. Okay. Okay. Preacher, so it's all right. You used to preach. Yeah. Christianity? Yeah, I used to preach. Then you stopped? Yeah. Why? Uh, well, I was always homework. Abstinence thing? Or? Yeah. Um, the whole what? A lot of people also feel kind of comfortable trauma dumping to me. So I've learned that I needed to really, I'm like very sensitive to energy and I will sometimes like attract people who just want to take my energy, like my good energy, and then I'll feel so depleted after. So I've really learned to protect my energy. And sometimes I can handle it and be like completely shielded and protected of it. And then sometimes I'm so unconsciously just like absorbing their energy and then I'm like, oh no, now I have to do like my own cleanse. See for me, I like this. For me, I call them deep conversations, like real conversations. Yeah, I know. They are. Which I really, really like. As oh, I love that too. Oh, what kind of music do you like? Oh, no, 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 no. Like, Don't get me wrong, I love it too, but... Thanks. <laughs> There's like a, I think there's like a fine line between like somebody who's like going to add value to your life versus somebody who's gonna bring stress to your life. You can you can kill us in each other. I'm not. You don't know, like fish. No. Oh, okay. I like fish. I like fish. Yeah. It's not very good. It's not that good. <laughs> So I have to add the sauce. It's not very fresh. Yeah, this tastes a little fishy fish. Yeah. Um, I'm good. But, because I grew up in the mountains, and I always had fresh water fish. Extremely fresh. Like my grandfather taught me about fish. Which part of Pennsylvania? Uh, I've been to U Penn, that's about it. Okay. Uh, go Is that near? Uh -huh. Keep going. Okay. Oh, yeah. that's Philly. That's yeah. Philly on the other side of the state. Okay. So I'm really good at Philly, which I love. I went to Wharton. I love the cheese steak. Yeah. So good. Yeah. I had my side, friend. Left side the right side. A Philly cheesesteak? Yeah, because there's two. There's Tony's and then there's... No, no, no. I didn't I didn't actually go to a restaurant. So oh. back in college, a classmate was of mine was from Philly, and we had cooking class together, and we made Philly cheesesteak. And I'm like, this is the best Philly cheesesteak I've ever had. Because it was like home... No, he made it. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. He made it. But like, lo and behold, like, he's... We're like 18, 19 years old. I'm like, dude, this is the best. No, we were in school. It was so Again, good. Though. That's still a justification. That's still that doesn't, well, that doesn't. Yeah, that doesn't actually answer the question. <laughs> no, no. Was, no. <laughs> no, this was during the daytime. Like we made this in the daytime during class. Oh, so original, original question. I was talking to a friend of mine, a comedian friend of mine, and he's in a, a long-term relationship with has a girlfriend, but not Jonah. And when he and his now girlfriend first got together, they had a conversation, and they specifically came up with the decision of we are not going to have sex in the first few months. Okay. What are your thoughts on that? That's fine. Why? Just curious. Why did they decide to do that? Um, no physical intimacy. Hookup culture. Hookup culture. Just trying to avoid hookup culture. Yeah. And, uh, like... It's hard. It's hard to develop a bond, like a genuine bond, yeah, with someone exactly. if you're already doing going that fast. Well, why did you already have the dopamine effect, right? You, because like. And then, but then you don't have like the actual foundation of trust yet. Yeah. So then it's kind of hard because if someone has their emotions tied to things. 
and I think it's specifically tied to sexual relationship. Because in any case, like women tend to bond more than men biologically yeah. because of yeah. the oxytocin, mm -hmm. yeah. but then guys too, so it becomes like a little dramatic when you have sex too soon. Yeah. So, honestly, the last situation she got was in. Um, we had hung out once, hooked up twice, and the second time we hooked up, she said I love her. Yeah. Which... Do you, does that scare you? Like, does that, when we talk about a fuckboy, is it coming on too strong and you want to pull away? It's, it's scared me because I knew that I did it really that way about her. And I would never feel that way because, because she was insecure and her uh, communication style was not. But some guys like that. Some guys want an insecure person. Yeah, but my ex was extremely insecure. So and most people in Taiwan are. My, my ex was American. Oh, okay. Like, straight up white American. Uh, not but yes, many people in Taiwan are. And so I saw that and like I saw it. This is after your divorce? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I never cheated. So you saw that? So you saw that in no I, I just didn't know the timeline. Oh, okay, Is it before yeah. you got married or after you got married? Okay, so I got married in twenty. Okay. So we were married for how long? Uh, Fifteen years. Wow. So a real marriage. Yeah, a real marriage. <laughs> never cheated, never so Got single, and then I had to like. In this stage, in this person. Well, I wanted to have a host stage. I really did. Like, so she was part of your host stage. Yeah, yeah, because you know, I my ex was the first person I fell in love with. So and actually the first person I ever dated. Anyway, so. And the first person you had sex with. Yep. You lost your virginity to her. Yep. Absolutely. No, in hindsight, I was not her first, which she did not tell me until we were married for 15 years. Wow. Yeah. How about that? Interesting. Considering yeah. you're, you're a missionary, a seminary yeah. school, yeah. very amazing interesting. amazing what happens when come out, what comes out. How long, did it, take, what, how long did it take before that to happen, for that to reveal itself? For you to learn that about her? Because for all intents and purposes, but for all intents and purposes, you knew, you thought she was a virgin when you met, and then how long did it take? So oh, look, when you're 14 I, is when I you found out. I knew she was not. Oh, okay. However, she denied and denied and denied. How did you know she wasn't? Because she told me the story of like, oh, I, I got drunk with this guy, I got blackout drunk with this guy, and ended up spending the night in this hotel. And I don't remember it, and I woke up naked in the morning, but I didn't have sex. That's uh, so it sounds sucks. like rape. And like, that's no. why that's what I assumed. Yeah. That's what I assumed for the longest time, and she just didn't understand. I'm like, oh, you totally raped. But I put it out of me, and it wasn't until we had been together for you know married, and we were in counseling for a year and a half, and she decided to tell me, oh yeah, oh, I really want to talk about she lied to you for that long. Yeah. She just said, I didn't know I had sex and I just woke up naked. Oh my god. How could she do that for that long? I wonder why someone would hold that so much for so long. The whole guilt thing. Okay. Wow. See, if, with my partner, I would want him to reveal all his secrets beforehand. The longer you can hold a safe space for your partner, the easier it is for them to soften and the more you just reaffirm like, hey, I see you, all your flaws, and I love you in spite of it. Exactly. Exactly. The more they can be like, I'm me. And then they realize like, wait, you're the first person who's actually accepted me because everyone else, you know, if they tell the real thing, oh, she would leave him. And so that was my issue. Yeah, that's why it's so important to, like, yeah, to, to have that conversation. That, like, not just to have a conversation, so you have to put actions into the words. It's not yeah. just the words, you've got to. Yeah, you've got to be able to, like, 
show the person, show your partner that you can throw clothes, don't close. Like you want to close, like push past it, like open, 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 like soften. Yeah, they gotta go through that healing process, even if it's not with you. But they just gotta go through it. Yeah, so I'm still just trying to find myself because I got married. It's one on one. But then you knew she didn't love her. Or you knew you didn't love the, the whole stage girl. So that's, so when, by the second time she told you she loved you, then what happened? Did you break it off or did you still see it? And, then and what I told her, and I specifically told her, and as soon as she said, right. however, I, I will never, yeah. I will never, and it's your choice to continue to hang out with me or not, yeah. however, it's, it is what it is, it is what it is, and she still did, and she still did, for how long, six months, and then what stopped, uh, I saw, well she was getting ready to, she was getting ready to overseas work, what does that mean, Filipino, she was working here, she was in the Philippines. Okay, so she's so she a factory worker. Huh? Oh, she's a factory worker. Yeah, factory worker in Taiwan. And she had an opportunity to go to Canada, which is oh, a lot of money. Oh, yeah. Better working conditions, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. The insane Taiwanese Laoban. Laoban? Laoban, the boss. Laoban. Um, and she was talking about not going because she wanted to stay with me. Wow, she was really trying to be committed to you. She, yeah. So you told her to go. I said I can see her. That's really noble of you. Say you should just go to chase the opportunity. Don't stay for me. I know, because she wanted to stay for you. And I, even though I told her again and again, again like, I enjoy being with you, but I'm like, now. Did you see other people while you saw her? Like, were you exclusive? She wanted me to be so what if you're, even though I didn't look up to anybody else at right. the time, you just, did, you just, just didn't give her the exclusivity, like the actual partnership she wanted. Yeah. It's not because you were seeing other people, you just didn't want to give her what she needed. Yeah. What, what she felt she needed. So then, so then what was it because, like what is the drive be behind a guy who doesn't want to be exclusive with her? With her or guys in general? With guys in general, both. I don't know. Yeah, so with her. With that her, she reminded me of a lot of my ex and she was not a very secure person, as I said before. And she was very clingy. So it had nothing to do with sex. It had nothing to do with like. It had nothing to do with like you wanted to sex with someone else. Or so regardless, so that means no, no, that just proves the point no, that like. It was a mental thing. It was. It was. It was a mental thing. It proves she, she was a very attractive person, physically. It's her personality. It was the personality that just. Uh, that just proves my. Yeah, yeah, that just proves my point that like. Uh, like no, more food because. No matter how no good matter. the sex is, it doesn't matter, right? Because yeah, because it it's if the the sex can be so good, but it doesn't matter because for whatever reason you still didn't want to be exclusive with her. You still didn't want to like settle down. Yeah. That's what actually like intrigues me most about like the psychology of the male brain and the female brain because the female brain like females will always try to convince ourselves but this and that and blah 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 so like they will they will put things aside and make a lot of sacrifices so i'm always curious like guys don't really sacrifice <laughs> Like guys don't really, they don't settle. Like, I mean, which is great, they don't settle, but my point is like, they never stop hunting. Mm, I don't know about that. Well, you just said like the, the sex can be so good, sex can be perfect, she can be the perfect thing, but yeah, her personality. Yeah, that's what I mean. I mean, like, yeah, sex is fine, but that's what, three hours a night, maybe? Yeah, that's what that's what I mean. Like the, like the, 
I feel like you guys, it starts out as sex. Like they need it. They need it to be like, oh, do I still want to see you? The sex has to be good. But that's like. I don't agree with that. No, I totally don't agree with that. Okay. Because if the sex is improved, that can be changed. Yeah, you can always you can help always someone. You can always help, help someone get better there's at sex. There's entire stores dedicated to this. Yeah, there's not only entire podcasts. There's novels. Yeah, there's yeah, ways so to make it better. The vibe. The vibe. Well, so what was the vibe? Why was the vibe off? She worked nights. Okay. So it so wasn't that, just her personality, it was also her lifestyle. She worked nights. Hardly available. Hardly available. Um, I see. If very naive, as far as life is concerned, like... Would you eat this? Fog test? This looks good. Yeah. I mean, I'll have a bite of something. I'm kind of topped off. Yeah. Oh. I'm, I'm, I look like I eat a lot, but I don't, actually. Um, I wonder if this is like a virtue of mine, that I can, I can hold one down with the boys. But I can eat as much as I can. I actually like that. You just have a high time with us. No, I, I mean, I do, but I also like the fact that like I'm like pretty competitive. And so, well, you won. Congratulations. Yeah, well, not because I like wanted to win. I also like had a brother, but we never like fought for food. I, I just always like had, have, have, have. I have a brother. Oh, did I say had? Oh no, I have. I have a brother, but we never like fought for food. It wasn't like it wasn't like a typical like a house with four boys. And if you don't rush to eat, you're not going to eat. Huh? Go go. So. So, I think I'm just used to, I'm just used to eating, like in my, in my household it's always like, like, like eat more, and so, yeah, I've never been around, like I don't have friends who don't eat, don't friends with guys, I don't have friends who don't eat, and I think maybe, I don't know if it's like, I bring it, I make it comfortable so that like, if they see that I'm eating, then they feel more comfortable eating, because I always see, like, some girls, they just don't eat, and I'm like, why? You must be hungry! Why is it a head trip? Because they don't want to be considered, or they don't want to be considered. Yeah. Yeah. So you think guys think that if a girl eats their jazz? I don't, I really but don't they, know. They, they think that. Girls think that. Think that. Yeah, but yeah. guys don't think that way. I don't think guys think that way I've either. Never, I've never met a guy that said to me, oh, I was out this girl last night. She ate too much. Yeah, I've never. I've never talked to a guy. I've also never, like, like usually they're like, wow, you get as much as me, that's impressive. Like they ask us and they ask me like, where does it go? And then I'm like, the toilet? <laughs> like, I don't know. Yeah, it was amazing. The bidet? No, no, no. So Sam is on holiday, which is actually a relief because he's really stressing out the house. Yeah. My other roommate is great. Well, she's leaving. So sad. She's leaving. Yeah. yeah. So I don't know how it'll be like with him, but uh, so can I order the, the flautas? Oh uh, yeah, sure. I take some please. Yeah. yeah. Please. So did you get all your bumps out of the, the living room? No, the boxes <laughs> are still there. Well, no, I moved most of the stuff. It's just the bins that don't fit are still there. So I am considering like that's why I was like, oh my gosh, maybe I might need your help. To do it again. Yeah. If, if he like whines again, then I'm gonna have to find another solution because you can't just stack them in your room. I don't have space. It's already full. I'm saying stack. Yeah, it's already full. It's already been stacked. So. When does he come back? Tomorrow. Yeah. So it's just what you get. Yeah. on these like new antibiotics because I have severe bronchitis for the past eight, seven months. You didn't know about it? I did know about it and the doctor's like, I've been to so many different ENTs with this week, or this past week. 
the doctor gave me a new antibiotic. So it's like giving me nasal drip. Because I have a long history of chronic inflammation that I've been living with. And so for me, it's just kind of like living in a not a healthy state. I have lupus, I'm not a lupus. So I've been living with like chronic inflammation for like a long time. But I was only diagnosed in 2020. So I didn't know, I didn't, I basically was, I didn't know what, like, what the fuck was wrong with me until I came here and I didn't even know. Well, yeah, just because it cost the same to see a rheumatologist that I didn't even know, I didn't even know what rheumatology was in the States. But then I was like looking up, basically what happened was my toe was numb and I didn't know what it was. So I just started Googling and finding what doctor to see because it was numb for a week and I had no idea. And then I stumbled upon seeing a rheumatologist and he was basically like, well, you don't have gait, but let me run a blood test. And when I got the blood test results, they were twice over the normal realm of what the um, lupus like threshold is. And so he's like, well, so you don't have gait but, or like gout or whatever that thing was that I thought I was checking for, but you have lupus. And at the time I'm like, I don't know, what does that mean? So like, do you give me some medicine? And he's like, no, call, come back when your hair falls out and then we'll prescribe you on the medicine. Like I have to qualify the National Health Insurance for lupus is sick. So you have to be so sick for them to give you stuff. And so I didn't qualify, so I have to pay like out of pocket for most of my medical care. Because it's just, so yes, the National Health System is like great for healthy people, it's terrible for actual sick people. And I don't look sick, but it's, it's just my immune blood cells are killing each other because they don't know the difference between a healthy immune cell and a not healthy. And so my, my good blood cells are attacking my bad blood cells, and so it's just, just an overall lower state. Yeah, so. How uh, Now it explains a lot. So, probably since I was a kid. But then, probably only got super severe in the past five years. And then now I'm kind of like all of my skin stuff. I'm like very. Um, I pay attention to a lot of my skin because it's the largest organ in my body and lupus, for people who like don't know lupus, I tell them it's like cancer, only instead of it attacking one organ, right, you have lung cancer, it just attacks your lung. Lupus can attack any organ it wants and it doesn't have to just attack one organ. So I have, it attacks my skin first, that's like the first line of defense when I know something is wrong, so my skin starts being like fucked up or I start getting acne or whatever then I'm like oh shit it's a lupus response I'm having a flare up um, so then what do you do for most of the time they just have to ride in the wave just... Selena Gomez has like the di a different form of lupus she's also insanely rich so she has the ability to pay for the thing that she needs I don't so I can't get that thing um, how much is it like, if you ask me has, has a lot, thousands, the five figures for like a treatment. And that's what the, the injection. Taiwan, the prescription. No, the Taiwan. U.S. Oh, okay. But it doesn't matter. The price is the same. The U.S. and Taiwan. Like essentially, now anything that I want is out of pocket. So if I want to get a blood test that I actually need, it's like between fifteen to thirty thousand. It's not covered by insurance. Wow. Yeah. So I'm kind of, kind of just like I went to a different ENT, and yes, it only costs 200 NT, but we don't know if it's gonna fix the thing. It gave me like eight different pills, and I'm just going in blind trusting them. But because I'm one of the very few who has the actual experience with the healthcare system to actually push it to its limits. And basically I push the lim limits of the national health insurance in Taiwan to its limit to the point where it's like no longer serving me. It was one of my main reasons for coming here actually. Yeah. So it's like kind of no longer serving me. But it's weird because no one thinks I'm sick. I don't look sick. I look healthy. Even you said I have a high metabolism, but like I I don't feel like garbage all the time, but I do have chronic fatigue. Like today, 
I had to sleep and I like it's weird I I slept at 4 a.m. and woke up at like 11 and then I ate food and then I just needed to sleep until 5 p.m. So it's kind of really this is why YouTube works for me because I can't hold a regular job I would get fired if I had to call out sick three to four times a week and I can't predict it and so obviously in the US you're protected with you know disabilities insurance or whatever but nobody wants and of course there's you're protected by law like they can't discriminate you but if I'm not able to perform the duties of the job like why the fuck would they want to hire me so I basically just kind of resorted to like what I can do to hustle for money and it works for me it kind of makes me happy I do it when I have energy when I don't I just don't I just take it easy because I I think it's because of like going through my health issues really helped me realize like the meaning in life it's like not about working and working for the money it's about the people and and I and I tell people this and they're like Lisa you're not dying blah 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 because I always say like it comes at the end of your life when you realize how important living your life actually is because tomorrow's never promised I really don't know if I'm gonna live tomorrow but it's, but I'm not like a dying situation where like I only have six months to live it's just like I think because of that and because, and because of how many ego deaths I've had as well and couples like I'm an old soul now I feel like I'm like living like I'm retired because there's no other way to live and I actually like that because in the past I would think wait I need to work because if I want to go on a yacht and go on a sailing trip or whatever I need to work and then retire and then have fun I've just done it in reverse, it's like, just have fun now, and then the money will come and go, and you don't need to worry about it, and you just keep going, keep working hard, keep living your life, just living your full life, which is why I don't subscribe to like the drama, the petty dramas of the techno culture here, you know what I mean, the, the people here who just like kind of don't have anything better to do, then there's dramas because I have real problems and they don't. Well, not to, not to, not to, admit, not to put down their feeling, right? Because their oh, sure. problems are very real to them. Of course, their the problems are very real to them. In, in comparison, yes, it's not that it's not that big of a deal. Sometimes I find it so heavy that I just can't even, they can probably even see it on my expression. Like, I cannot deal with this conversation because it's just like, I'm not thinking about myself, it's just like, there are so many bigger things to worry about, like climate change, world hunger, than to think about who got, like, which guy likes them or not. For that particular person, for that particular person, that is their, that is their issue. That's their world. Yeah, that's their world. Yeah. Um, especially when their self-image is very much wrapped up in other people's yeah, other people's approval. Yeah, yeah, they want to know what other people think of them. Yeah, I mean, just you know, just the work that she does, that's the side job that she does. That's she what does. I wonder. Oh, so you know who I'm talking about? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I don't yeah. even need to say the name. Yeah. So, you, so like, Hello. thank you. Wow. Wow. So like, she's like, she's like super dear. Like, she's dear. I'm sure she's like great. It's just kind of. I wonder what men think, not of her, but like in general, like do they actually, do men actually like the insecure women? Because I actually think they do. They like the weak women, like weak men want weak women because they can't handle a strong woman. Ooh, it's warm. Yeah. It's hot, Good, you need hot food. She's a self-proclaimed masochist, right? And she hangs out with like the BDSM circles. But then, so no, so my, no, my question is not about her, just in general, like, do, oh. do men, this is more of a philosophical, like, oh. do men really like weak women? They like to prey on the insecure women. This is a, perhaps like a sense of control. They know they can play on their insecurities. Mm, that's a control thing. I mean, I, I don't know how much a lot of those men can actually verbalize it. They don't recognize it as like, oh, I'm a person, so I pray on the 
subconscious, right? Yes, it's subconscious. Um, because they want to have control? Yeah. What is because that? they can't control themselves. Or they yeah. don't. There's something in their life that they don't have control over. What is, what is it you think they don't have control over? Their job. Their job? Why do you think they're a job? They have a boss that's a dick. Or maybe they have a mom that's like a total harpy. A harpy? Harpy. Like a nitpicker, naggy. You know, their mom just nags at them all day. And so they're trying to look for their mom? They're, maybe they think they're looking for the office. Ah. Uh, or they could be looking for their mom. Say like, say because their 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 model in these kinds of dynamics in childhood. And so like, if their mom has some kind of mental illness, then they also seek girls with mental illnesses because that's what they're used to. Yeah. They know how to take care of mom. No. And they don't actually know how to like be with like uh, someone who doesn't have a mental illness. Why? Why do people get into relationships? There's a whole many um, yeah. They're trying to fill up. Uh, they're trying to fill up. Yeah, they're trying to roll out a void, but. Yeah. So, for whatever reason. But they've got to realize that that's not the way to get it, to have a relationship. That would involve counseling. That would what? But that, for that particular person, that would involve counseling. A lot of self work. Oh, for them to realize that they would. Yeah. To break easier. out of it. Yeah, it's yeah, easy yeah. for us to look at someone and be like, oh, this is their blah, 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 right? This is their issue. Oh, to psychoanalyze someone? Yeah. No, it's that's e not what I'm trying to do. No, but what I'm saying it's easy to identify other people's problems. It's much harder to oh, sure. identify your problem. Ah. Well, I'm like constantly, because I'm like always working on myself. No. It's like the most important job. So you I actually. Have you ever been in therapy? What? Have you ever been in therapy? Yeah. Uh, I've had several different kinds of therapists since I was 18. So Myself. I've gone through cognitive behavioral therapy, yep. yep. Um, and I have several different types of therapists. That's when I learned not every therapist is created equal. Oh yeah, 100%. Have you tried uh, EMT? I've been therapy. Oh really, how was it? I've heard about therapy. Traumatic therapy. I've tried all their friends. And ESD, ESDR or EMDR? Yeah, yeah. There's so uh, many EMDR, EMDRs. Right. There's so many therapies. I love the EMDR. I love them all. Honestly, I love therapy so much. Okay. I'm not addicted to it, but this is why I like kind of want to evangelize it to my YouTube because few people, <laughs> few people realize it's, it's like the thing is, it's like everybody needs a neutral party to talk to. It's not just the talk therapy. When someone actually wants to like work and improve on themselves, the self healing journey never stops. Mm -hmm. How do you get rid of your conditioned programming from childhood other than to go through it? You have to face your fears. You have to go through it, and you need a guide. You need a coach. Yeah. Why? How do how do athletes get better? They have coaches. So why not hire a coach if you want to be better? Like, how, how did Kobe get better? He had a coach. Yeah. You can't just play basketball being like, I'm the best. Like, well, I know everything. Like, you need a coach. When you, you know, if you live 30 years in the foot, let's just use it as an example, right? You live 30 years in the foot, you learn how to walk a certain way. Yeah. Then, after 30 years. And learn everything. Yeah, you have to, you have to start it, and it's, it's a reverse thing. It's not like you can just go back and no, start it. No, you have to climb back down the mountain. Slowly, yes. Slowly, go down the snow, and then go back the right mountain. But you can't just go and unlearn 30. You have to actually, it doesn't. You have to unwork 30 years of yep. learning and training and everything that went into the last 30 years of life. That's why I have like my last few live streams were, were like kind of about this. It's like how to move on in your life, how to find purpose. Because so many people are depressed these days. I'm just like, oh man, I, I want to help them. <laughs> Like, I can't shake them out because they have to realize it themselves. They but have to want to do it themselves. Yeah. Because it's that's what's called self work, not not Lucy work. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Have you gone to anything other than couples therapy? I haven't even done couples therapy. I did, I did couples therapy and CBT. And I want to do I want to do the the light the eye 
Um, I'm currently like investigating that. I want to do that. Are you talking about the light therapy? I'm talking about light therapy. Like oh, actually okay. using light to like no, reach a certain state of a sentence. Would you call it EMB to EM? EMDR. EMDR, yeah. I'm really not sure that. Not that one. Because I, I think it's interesting, the, the reaction. Or, who was it? Maybe I was talking to you. No. Nope. No, no, no. I was talking to someone else. Uh, my, one of my podcast guests. He was telling me about, he did this thing called movement therapy. Yeah. And with your like eye movement therapy? No, 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 body movement. Okay. So like you tell a story, like you, let's say you tell a story about childhood trauma, and then basically the, the person who's helping you, they notice your body posture mm -hmm. as you're telling the story, and then later on that they take note of that, and then later on they tell you to get into this posture that you had exhibited when you were telling the story about That's cool. your, you know, your yeah, father beating sure. the shit out of you. Sure, sure, right? sure. And then they, they say, how do you feel in this position? Oh, I feel hopeless, desperate, blah, blah, blah. And it's, it's helping I've you. I've had that too. Really when you start to have these stories that you share, um, you know, you can close off. It's the therapist's job is to be like, okay, take a moment. So they know this stop you. posture. Yeah. How do you feel? And then like, oh, really? try okay. doing this. Like, put your hand on your hip, on your thighs and yeah. just like breathe with me. And then like, and then how do you feel? And then that, it's so cathartic. It's so great. But that's a mindful practice as well. But like, what these therapists do, they don't just teach you in session. I mean, a really good therapist. Gives you homework, yeah. Not just gives you homework. And if you are willing to actually do the work, you realize, wait, I'm going to use this technique because I'm not going to want to pay $150 each time to do the same thing. I'm going to use this technique and practice it on my own freely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I have this technique for life. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like my, my therapist. So One like, of the things they help, she helped me with was circle breathing. Or like uh, circle. three, seven, eight breathing. Three in, seven out, seven holds, at eight hours. Yeah, three yeah, in, yeah, seven, yeah, eight, yeah, seven yeah, out, yeah, eight yeah. hold. There's so many different ways. Three? No. Three. Four, seven, eight. Four in, hold for seven, eight, eight out. out. That's cool. I've done circle breathing too. I've done so many times. That's why I'm like, my YouTube channel is slowly but surely. I have to introduce it in bits because everyone just wants to see the ass. And then I'm like, but there's well, like, the yeah, but then I'm like, but then here's something I can leave you with because I've done the work. I've paid thousands of dollars to do it. Yeah. And YouTube is free. I will teach you. Yeah, yeah. So like, if I, when I die, at least the channel lives on. That's true. <laughs> so, yeah. So if you had to choose a time, a date, on a date, uh, my a, death. Year, a year, a year. Of my death? Yeah. Oh, no, I want to live until like, I, so, have you seen the show Altered Carbon on uh, Netflix? I started it, but I never finished it. Ah, uh, okay. Okay, so yeah, you can live forever. Can, yeah, with, with, a new, with a new skin, right? That's yeah, you skin, just skin. upload your brain yeah. to the neural link. Yeah. And so... If I don't necessarily want to live forever just because I know humans are just awful and they're just gonna destroy the Absolutely. planet. Yes. But I would love it to go to Mars one day. It's not gonna happen in my lifetime. It would be great. Because I love space travel. Okay. And I like geek out. <laughs> Star Wars or Star Trek? Star Wars. Really? I have watched every Star it is Wars. So unscientific. And all the spin-offs. Is Star Trek scientific? I feel like it's more sci- it, Star Trek is more sci-fi than fantasy. And even Star Wars is complete, like, George Lucas describes it as a space, uh, opera. Yeah. So that's not sci-fi. That's, that's fantasy. It's pure fantasy. I like fantasy. Okay, fair enough. But I also like Foundation. That's sci-fi. Okay. And... Um, okay. I like yeah. both actually. Like I like right now I'm gonna Star Wars better because I got Disney Plus. Yep. And I'm just That's why I watch all the Star Wars. Yeah yeah. Mandalorian? Oh, of course. Yeah. I love the Mandalorian. Boba Fett is good. No. But oh, really you don't like the Boba Fett? It's Boba Fett. I actually like um the Clone War. The clone the animated Bad Batch. Bad Batch. I like oh, that yeah, one that's better. Good. Yeah. But I've seen all, right now I'm on, on Andor. Uh, I think I'll need to rewatch Andor. Did you see, did you see on Disney Plus? There's a TV show called Young Jedi. Yes, like, but I didn't watch it. I, but it's no, but it's for like it's not an actual spin-off, right? No, it's 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 animated, right? Yeah, but it's insane. Like, 
I'm full of apples. You like? I finally found your limit. I'm like, you guys are <clears throat> Probably my favorite. Oh, yeah. I'm not watching that. That's probably the one spin off I'm not watching. Like, it's so late. Like, yeah. Young Jedi? They might, like, I don't know. It's but Disney. It's, they, they it's need to make toddlers. Money. It's toddlers. It's like, toddlers. Okay, oh, so listen to their Padawans. Toddlers? Let's say their Padawans. Padawans don't get lightsabers. It's only when you become a Jedi that you actually get lightsabers. Yeah. So, oh, they're getting lightsabers already. Yeah, look, they have lightsabers. They have the, the green and pink ones. So, you tell me, what the hell? Well, how old are they, though? They're clearly toddlers. No, because when they were, I mean, they get, just, they get lightsabers to do training. Maybe. Are they actually fighting on the adventures? I have adventures? Yeah, so like... Star Wars Young Jedi Adventures. Maybe it's just an animated version, so they, they're supposed to be like 30 years old, but it's cartoon. Yeah, like they might actually be adults. The Yoda's there. Yeah, see? So that means they might actually be adults. They might not actually be okay, children. Okay, you're right. I, ju I prejudge the show. Yeah. I probably won't watch it, but... I mean, I probably won't watch it. I have my limits. <laughs> but I love Star Wars. I have Disney Plus, too. Yeah. I've seen all the Marvel... Uh, yeah, okay. I love Disney Plus. I've seen all the princess movies. Fine. I know. Here's, here's my I don't. I, I didn't say there's anything wrong. I, don't, I love Disney. Horror movies? Are you a fan? No. Oh, me too. Thank God. Okay. Yeah. I am. I don't, uh, no, I don't like, do that, that, scary movies. Like, the last it, scary movie I saw was The Sixth Sense, and it stops there. I had nightmares when I was like a kid. I could not do it. It's a really good movie. If you watch it as an adult. I, I don't think I can, but obviously I know he was a ghost the whole time. Yeah. But like, I can't. The scratching in the closet, and then him actually getting hurt. I haven't watched it in so long. Like, anyway. I, um, I haven't watched like, it in over 10 years, and I still remember. This is why I can't watch scary movies. I was, I was... I was talking to a girl. We went on a few dates. And Did she was me? a movie producer. No, this is, this is when I first got single. Uh, she was a movie producer in Taiwan. Taiwanese movie producer. And she loved horror movies. And I... She made you watch horror movies? No, 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 no. She, I was terrified of her making me watch a horror movie because I dislike horror movies that much. Why don't you just tell her I, I won't watch horror movies with you? Only rom coms. <laughs> I was gonna play. I just, I, for me, it was, you know, I, it felt unmanly to me, you know? To tell her? Yeah. Oh. Because we, we were still in the like, getting to know you stage, right? Don't you think it's better and more refreshing if you just kind of lay it all out there, though? Like, forget being judged. They either accept you or they don't. And if what, they don't, let them move I, out of the way. I have been Oh, very right. years. Oh, you were codependent. I, I see, I see. I've been married for 15 years, yeah. and I was still learning who I was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. God, I, like, I shouldn't I have been dating to begin with. Mm. I should not have been dating in that situation. However, I was horny. That's <laughs> what it, you know. I thought I wanted sex, and yeah. And then what did you want? Just companionship? Sex. I really want sex all the time. <laughs> you know? Because okay. my ex, she used to die in those, uh, a maniac. She's really naughty then. Uh, no, she liked vanilla sex. She just liked a lot of it. She liked a lot of vanilla sex. Yeah. Is that good or? Is that good? Is that comfortable for you? Um, I liked it. I mean, it was a little worrisome that I could never satisfy her, even though they could fuck like three times or four times, okay. five times. Okay. Like, nights. And then again in the morning. So, yeah, it was a little like, oh, why are you not good enough for her? But anyway, that's, that's not that good. However, really horny. You know, huh? I'm just really horny. Well, I. So, I got used to a certain level of. Uh, Woman. Uh, things happening, yes. And so then suddenly I'm Did you match? Oh, right, right, right. Did you match her sexual desire? Like, yeah, driver, we, we, you, we always, about this. you always had the high sexual drive. Um, and then she matched, or she had a higher sexual drive than you. She was much higher than me. But, like we've talked about before, I'm, you know, I match my partner, right? Whatever. If they're down, I'm down, right? Whatever they want, I want. So. 
she was like rough ties and stuff? Like, no, she was vanilla. She was straight vanilla. She so then vanilla. what got you into it? Sport that. Um, just wanting to explore what's out there. Yeah. Just see, see, see what's out there. Yeah. But you only first got in, like, it, 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 um, introduced to it in Taiwan? Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. I'm not too sure how I feel about the landscape in Taiwan. I feel like it's so. I don't like it actually. Yeah, I feel like there's a certain type of woman, and they all exhibit the same type. And I am the kind of person like I hate to be typecasted as being like in that thing, and so I almost like revolt because I think it's just so different from how. It actually is. I think the people here doing it are doing it because they they don't know what they're doing. They don't know what the fuck they're doing. They're really terrible at tying. <laughs> and so I'm just like, God, I feel like, ugh. <laughs> but I'm not trying to sound like snobby or whatever. Like, I know it all. I'm like, oh, I'm from LA, blah, blah, blah. It's just like, I feel like they like want to do something and they think they... They want to do something deviant and they want to be like rebellious. Mm -hmm. They want to go against the grain, not care about the consequences. But they don't actually understand like sexual pleasure the way, I guess, American sex pleasure. I don't know. I don't even know if it's a cultural thing. I don't even know if, but I don't even know if it's a cultural thing. I don't know. I, I just, or maybe it's, because the thing is, is like in the, in the US, America, like sex is celebrated now. There are entire companies on just the female orgasm. Mm -hmm. Entire companies, marketing. Yeah, it's pretty shows. like pro women. Yeah. Like uh, pro women's like it's a women's women lube. Sex toys. Yeah, yeah, women's lube, out. and even men sex toys too. That's yeah. actually a booming market too. So some of those are quite fun. I'm not a big fan. I know. Flashlights. Oh god, no, no, those are so creepy to me. Why? It's like kind of real, right? No. No. It's just. Sponsored by one of the sex companies. That's fine. Well, they they hook you up with their products? They what? Do they hook you up with their products? I got a free, I have free products. Nice. Um. Then actually. Okay. okay, basically, as, as in a nutshell, yeah. I just don't think, I feel like. I feel like the I feel like the, the Taiwanese community is doing it wrong. They're trying too hard, and they're making it so like secretive and subtle, and it's just like they're making it so taboo that it makes it really hard to be accepted. That's probably why she's not accepted. It's whereas it's, in, in LA, it's just accepted. It's like normal and well, it's celebrated. Actually, I feel like like their actual sex workshops. It's it's a much smaller community here than in LA, even though the yeah. population. About the same. How many people are in LA? I don't know. A lot. 17 million? 17 million. That's Taiwan, about... has, Taiwan has 25 million. Yeah, so like LA is. Yeah, so yeah. the thing is though is that like it's the, it, the community is not only so small, but I think everyone just only does one thing because they think they know what's right. So like people do pole, people do aerial, and then I always, I guess I always want to find out their why. Like why they do it, and I'm not too sure. Like it aligns. So like when I talk to people at Studio Nine, they say they do it because, or they say they like go there because it's like just like complete opposite. Like doing the doing the stuff, and it's yeah. just the complete opposite of a traditional Taiwanese woman. And so they just they go but for. But not really because so many of those girls are they're, they're straight subs. What do you mean? Like they're 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 bottoms. Or they're completely bottom. Like. Right, but that's the all of the. Uh, that's all of the. That's like all of them. Yeah, that's, that's what I mean. That's what my frustration is. Yeah. So they don't. That's why I'm like you they don't. I mean, you gotta come with me. That's what I mean. Like they don't. They, 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 like they don't know what the fuck they're doing. They As don't know how to tie rope. Yeah. yeah, they don't actually know yeah. how to be a proper sub. Yeah. And I'm just like, what the fuck? Do I need to teach these people? Like, oh my god. And then they're like. You. I think you and Edith will bond. Um, is she the teacher? Yeah. She was a bottom for a long time, and I think she had a talk to the broker, is my opinion. And after that, she she just can't find a good rigger, 
And so she's like, fuck it, I'll just do it myself. And so now she's uh, taught. That's so sad because I've only had experiences with good readers and I'm just like, I'm looking for that, like that. Well, that's, I have, that's the, the thing is that my, my bar is set, like I already have expectations. Yeah, now I'm afraid to even try and tie you. No, 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 you can <laughs> try to, it, I, I actually really like like the experimenting and it'll help you learn and then. But I know I'm not good. And you just need practice on the people who are already on those workshops. You just need to practice on them. But that's the thing. Like, they don't want you so, to. So this is, the, this is my issue, right? They because don't want you to practice on they them. They don't want you to practice on Why? them. Why? Like, that's so because stupid. Because I'm a big scary guy. That's so stupid. Because you're not. Because. But that's the thing. That's a stereotype. This is why I hate the Taiwanese media, like that community. Yeah, exactly. The whole, because it's all visually based. I hate that. Because in reality... The entire space, so he doesn't go there ever. He hasn't been in long time. He just doesn't like the, the people, so he just go there. I don't know where he meets out. Um, yeah, let's let's set up that leather shop. I don't know how to It's actually an online thing. No, no, they already had it. Like, they already um, have it. Actually, they've been trying to like. Um, Message me because I wanted to see like if they would have something on sale, which they don't until like Christmas time. But I love it because I found them on Instagram, and I think they only have a, they have an online shop. I don't think they actually have clothing because I saw an online like paddle. No, I'm talking about actual like an outfits, really? not oh, paddles. I don't do paddles, but yeah, I'll show you the I'll show you the site. I like it because 
Um, I've been looking for like real leather that's like Taiwan. Yeah, like real leather. I don't like vegan leather. And I don't like, um, I don't really, I like, want to know where they get their leather. Like, yeah. so, uh, so I like that. I like what this, this brand's about. Um, and so, like, when it's you like see me. cheap for leather. Because okay. leather's supposed to be really expensive, but it's cheap because it's made here and the cows are sourced here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so I like that. Anytime I like want to wear something, I, I like to wear like something you that's got a story. story. Yeah, like I want to be able to support Taiwan in that way. And so I like, like supporting local. If it was just some Walmart uh, shop, like leather, you know, like I don't really, I don't know, you know what I mean? Like I don't want to like subscribe to that. But if there's, but if there's like a local handmade, if there's like a local handmade artisan, then it's like, oh, I can get behind this. Yeah. But it's really cute to wear like the, the, the necklace and then yeah. the band, the, the yeah, yeah. yeah, it's it's well, really no, nice they, the way I they do no it. They have a whole. For myself, so what's, what what do you imagine for me? You can also wear leather. That's what I'm saying. Like, what outfit do you imagine you wear? I mean, what color do you like? Black, brown, burgundy. Black you seem like or black, brown. probably. But more like, I, yeah. Brown might not stand out for you because your skin tone, it would blend to, like, they really couldn't tell apart brown from black. Okay. So you could probably do black or like a silver. Okay. But you actually, there's actually, isn't there like an actual, like, guy shop? There's an actual guy shop in Shimin. Yeah, that's for, that, yeah, that's all like. I've never been inside, it's yeah, for gay guys. Yeah. But they probably have they some have, stuff. They don't have candy. They don't have good stuff. Yeah. That's why I don't like any of the they sex like, shops. They have like speed dogs. I don't like any of the sex shops here. Can you tell them like, uh, There's one here. No. I've only been to one near here. I don't like any of the sex shops here. They don't even make it with the right, like, ingredients for lube and stuff. It's terrible. Like. Come with me to. That's why I like. <laughs> that's why I. I guess that's why I. I don't want to sound too snobby, but like when you start like doing this stuff, like you care about yeah, yeah, what you're yeah. putting in your body. You need to care about the ingredients. Yeah, 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 totally you need agree. to care about things that are not gonna itch. These people like don't know what they're doing. Yeah. Yeah. Or like the, the one store, the, the cleanest shop I've ever been to in Taiwan uh, is over by Gokwan, the, the electronics market. Okay. And they have like this entire section of silicone sex toys. That's it. That's their big seller. Mm -hmm. Which, not my body, because I went in for like lips and cuffs and like blood and shear. But I have like high quality stuff. Though. Yeah, so do I. Like if I'm going to buy a paddle, I want to buy a paddle. A real, or, yeah, a yeah, good yeah, one, yeah, not yeah. just some fake, mm -hmm. like cheap like, one that's uh, not going to feel good. Yeah, yeah. It's, yeah, it's just not going to feel good. Yeah. No, I totally agree. Um, even my ex, like he, he, when he had a leather set that he shared with his previous partner, and I have a thing where I don't, I never wore that because I don't, I don't want their, I don't want the previous energy surrounding that. I don't care, I don't care if you sage it a thousand times. I just don't. So I was just like, you either get rid of it or you never wear it. And so we ended up leaving it in London. And he was upset because he was like, it was really expensive. They only wore it a couple of times. So I was like, I don't give a shit. That's, I don't want your ex partner on me. I just don't want it. It was just a vibe because I met them at Burning Man, and for some reason she was just not cool with me. She was just like, I don't, I don't want, I don't want to be with him. No, not at all. I I met him at Burning Man. He went with her. Um, and he left with me. Oh really? Um, oh. He didn't leave with me Lucy, though. The no, they were actually not together. They actually like they, they were went together, but they there was like a situation show. Yeah. Um, well, no, that's her. That's his own thing. Well, her. Okay. It's her thing, but but he made it clear he's like you can come with me, but we are not doing Burning Man together. Like we can do some things during the day. Yeah. Um, but when the orgies break out, we're going to calm down. We didn't even meet at the orgy tent. We just met at Pink Heart. No, have you been to Burning Man? Oh, okay. No, but I've. I've yeah, we have. We have. We have the best. We have the best origin story, but the worst like ending story. But it's fine. I have a lot of love for him. I have him. So he, he told me like who he who he's with. Like I don't talk to him anymore because he's a little too much. But it's not Ian, is it? 
No. Okay. But he, um, but he basically, like, he told me, like, he was with someone on Valentine's Day, they were dating, and so I'm like, I'm really happy for him. Like, I wasn't with anyone, I streamed on Valentine's. You see how, like, committed I am to work, like, I'm not dating anyone, but I'm, like, so happy that he's, like, seeing someone. Because mm -hmm. I just want him to be happy. I don't like to waste food, so I'm going to eat this lettuce, even though it's just lettuce. This avocado. But, um, anyways. Yeah. But he, he and I agree. Yeah, he and I agreed on like investing in good quality products and like good stuff. So he, he was really nice. Like when I wanted, because we had tried so many different kinds of lube, and it just wasn't working for me. I was allergic. I have lupus, so like I there are certain ingredients like my body can't touch. Glycerin is one of them. It sucks, but it's yeah. So I had to find a very special lube that was like more expensive. But he understood after I like explained to him and. Of course, guys in the beginning, like, they don't understand until, like, you're, like, hammering home, and then they finally get it. And then they realize, like, why is this lube $20 when lube should just be $5? But then, like, it makes a difference, so it's, like, <laughs> do you want to get laid or not? Otherwise, like, yeah. otherwise, like, go jerk your own self off, because I'm not putting your lube in me. Oh, you have an issue with, like, control No, I don't. It's just, um... He, 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 he just would go a lot, so I would need lube at some point. Thank you. Thank you. It would, he, he would, yeah. Because <laughs> eventually, like, I mean, eventually... So are you, have you reached the point of just like, oh my god, just finish, I want to go to sleep? He's just, yeah. <laughs> no. That's why, yeah, that's why we... I know, and that's why I was, that's that's probably why I had a problem with natural wetness, because yeah. I wasn't coming. Because you weren't with it. Yeah, I wasn't with it. So that, that we didn't really, we didn't really, he, he, he was sometimes, it sucks because sometimes the sex would be amazing and like super, but then sometimes not. And I think it's, it's not just the bodies, the flesh, it's like whatever's going on mentally. Yeah. And he had a lot of shit going on mentally, and it's just like, it's so just like hard, for like hard to hard to connect, and and I don't like that. And so like now I'm much more like I need the connection. If someone is not mentally there, you might as well fuck a sex doll because I don't want to be your sex doll. Yeah. And then sometimes it would feel like I like that I was just a sex doll. Like, and so it just felt very disconnected, and that would affect like the, yeah. And what did you bring up? Over here. But it's weird because it wasn't always that way. Yeah. And that's not the reason why we broke up. The reason we broke up was like a mental thing. Yeah. But, um. Yeah, so you don't. You're like. Well, the thing you're is, to be, with your partner, you're supposed to be a little bit of a therapist, but you're not supposed to be the full time therapist. He wanted me to be his full time yeah, therapist. No. And no, I couldn't, no, but no, then. Hey, Pay the money to a full therapist, yeah. full therapist, get your shit straightened out, and then. And then, and then. And do the homework. But then we didn't, he didn't do the homework, that's the thing. We actually went to couple therapy, but sex was never our issue, actually. There were other things that was the issue. And even though it sounded like I said sex was the issue, it really wasn't, it was just more so. Intimacy. Yeah, like he was so close off and he didn't want to learn and he didn't want to, and I didn't have, he was really bad at taking direction. So I was just like, that didn't match. He also wanted me to be a full sub and that he was like, this is the only way I could do it. And I tried it. And I realized, like, I can't do it. I can if it was the right partner, but not with you. It's just not. Because he couldn't, anytime I would say something, he would almost get, like, offended, like, if I didn't like a certain position. And it would be like, what am I doing wrong? It's like, no, it's like, what is. Yeah, it was, so his communication was the problem. And he would say, my so communication was the problem. He just thought that he was his god. Yep, but he's not. And, and I and I and I and he gaslighted me so much to the point where I thought my communication was the problem, and I realized <laughs> my communication no, is not the problem. I'm a great communicator, and I wanted to like go through and learn together. But he didn't like any time he thought something was uncomfortable for me. He would almost be like, "What's wrong with you?" And then I'm like, I'm, "Nothing's wrong with me. Like we need to change the angle." And then he's just like, "Now what's wrong with me?" And, oh, so melodramatic. It's not all about you, dude. Yeah. That's the part with, that's why it's partnership, that's why you're with this person. Uh, sorry. Yeah, but. How old is he? 30. 30. But
but then like he's but then like with the BDSM community and like I think I stereotype like all women are the same they're all the vanilla they don't know how to actually explore because they are just taught by the teachers here or, or their boyfriend who watches porn and thinks that's what you should be doing even though that's nothing to do with right that's people, so that's why I'm a little, a little skeptical to approach these classes and coaches because because I, I guess because I've had really great sex coaches and like yeah. sex therapists and so I feel like they're not doing the job <laughs> that's that's probably only the reason why I haven't like been in that community and then it's such a small community I feel like yeah. um, it'll be a little incestuous what is it? Okay, what which is, is why I'm also not on dating apps because I feel like if I have sex with someone then I have sex with everyone in Taiwan yeah yeah, honestly, like, that's, like, when I saw your Insta, I checked to see who you're following and who's your friend, who's your middle, because, yeah, it's like... Do I, do I, I know? I know too many fuck boys. Do you, oh, do I, you what? You know? <laughs> no, none of, we you, don't know any of the same people, so... Oh, oh, did you see who I followed and you saw, you know, like, I know too many fuck boys? No, I said, you don't know anybody. Yeah, I don't. Like, I don't, I don't really have any friends. Because that's your only Insta account, right? Yeah. The, so, yeah, I don't have any friends. Aside from, you know, who. Yeah, you follow 36 people. Yeah, I don't follow anyone. Oh, yeah, Vicky, Yoshi, and. Um, uh. Uh. You know Yoshi? Yeah. Do you like him? Are you friends with him? Yeah, he's gonna play the gray area. Um, he can be a little much at times. <laughs> That's what I hear from people. He, like, he's a very sweet guy. Um, I met him through stand up comedy. Uh, and. Uh, he's an artist. <laughs> That's just the best way to describe it. He's just an artiste. What do you mean? Like he does that whole uh, flow flame thing, right? Yeah, and, fire. Yeah, and every time I, I just spins. Huh? He spins fire. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's pretty good at it. Yeah, he is. Um, just every time I see him, it's like before performance. He, oh yeah. Oh my god, two hours and it's all finished. <laughs> Anyways, what? So was that a live stream or that was? Just no, a I'm. Program? I recorded it. I, I don't. I don't do live streams because, it, I don't do live streams on data, because, um, I don't know if the quality is gonna be as good. If it's already like what it is on Wi-Fi, it's probably not gonna be good. Yeah. Not on Wi-Fi. But yes, yummy, yummy, yummy. I love this um, restaurant. So I, every time I've seen.